Watch him throw the ball, we gon' pick it off You gon' let him hit the hole or you gon' cut it off You gon' play through fourth and long or you gon' punt it off Your defenders have you hit us, put your pads in Don't be looking for the ref to throw no flags in Keep the helmet on, keep the cleats tight You the type to want to win by any means, right? You should look alive, this is Trapper Dive What it do, man? You know who this is, Coach Maul, Hen Dog Maul, Henny Maul, all that good stuff, man um welcome back to another episode of the trap dive podcast we got a good one for you today quick little in- uh, interview with the good man jd mckissick washington commanders running back uh long story short that you know he's a part of this initiative uh it's called the q collar um and the q collar for those who aren't familiar is uh fda cleared sports equipment uh essentially uh, that helps prevent uh, head trauma and and, and helps uh, clean up concussions and, and brain injuries and things like that. And um, he was good enough to stop by and really just chop it up and, and really talk, um, you know, about his career, talk some bowl. And then obviously, you know, what the Q collar has done for him or why he got involved with, uh, you know, utilizing that equipment um, to help his case when he's on the field and things like that. So um, I don't have too much else to say. <laughs> uh, it's a, it's a good interview. Uh, hope you all enjoy the discussion. And we will circle back down the road, man. Y'all enjoy yourself. Y'all enjoy the interview. Make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. All that good stuff, man. J.D. McKissick is up right now. And joining us right now is Commanders running back J.D. McKissick. J.D., man, I appreciate you joining me today. Um, How do I – all right, so where do we start? I think from an overall perspective, because I was trying to figure out how to even start this thing because – I was, it was a lot, it was a couple people that I remember in 2020 before you got here in Washington, um, there were a few running backs that like from a, a free agent perspective, uh, people were looking into, obviously at that point, Washington needed like a third down running back. And for me, uh, I was a big fan of your game. And then I was a big fan of Theo Riddick at the time and mm-hmm. they ended up going, Theo Riddick. yeah, Theo Riddick at the time. And, um, Obviously, for the, the same type of ability that you both have, pass catching out of the backfield, but also like explosive athletes. Um, and they ended up picking you up. And three years later, you were still here with the commanders. Uh, and I think you're a top five weapon with this team. Um, I think that's safe to say. 1,800 yards from scrimmage uh, in 34 games with the team. Uh, just how has these three years treated in, in Washington treated you? Um, it's treated me great, bro. Um, I can't complain, man. It's just to, you know, been through what I've been through as far as in the league, you know. I always felt like I was one of the best um, at what I do. Um, I never just got that opportunity um, to be given that, to be given that and be trusted, um, to be, you know, to get that, um, that, hey, we're going to let you get the rock. Um, that, that just meant a lot to me to show what I could possibly do. Um, in 2020, they let me do that, man. And last year as well, man. So um, that was definitely a reason um, why I wanted to return. I do love this team. I, you know, I got a lot of respect, respect for Rivera. Um, and, you know, it, it was no reason why, you know, I felt like I should not, you know, come back. So I, I can't complain about the first two for sure. Absolutely. And, and um, what you said just now reminded me of uh, Raheem Mostert for the the, the, uh, the Dolphins. And um, he was on an interview last week and he was talking about how, you know, he went through so much in the early because he's 30 now. And he went through mm-hmm. so much in the early <laughs> makings of his career, really trying to fight and and push through the adversity. And, and it was at one point where he mentioned like the Cleveland Browns was that moment. I think he was on the practice squad, if I'm not mistaken. And like mm-hmm. he had a conversation with his wife and that in that conversation can, or, or his wife's father, uh, it just told him and convinced him like to keep pushing and don't give up. Uh, mm-hmm. What was that moment? Because I, I know in Seahawks, you had that was like your longest tenure outside of the commanders. Um, the mm-hmm. Seahawks was your longest tenure. How, how? What was that that driving factor that told you, hey, um, I know you're not getting your opportunities right now, JD, but it's going to be worth it down the line, and you got to keep pushing. Man, um, I, I feel like it goes way, you know, way before that. Um, just being from where I'm from, and you know, growing up in Phoenix City, Alabama, um, and being in a one bedroom with. 
three with two brothers. It was three of us and my mom and my dad and just the struggle, man. And um, always not being counted on um, as far as when it comes to sports and getting, you know, getting overlooked. In high school, I had 25 catches for like 500, 100 yards mm. um, and, and begged the team for my high school for more touches. Um, and, you know, I got the opportunity to go to Arkansas State because I put some good stuff on film. And, you know, so that was already a chip on my shoulder um, because I always felt like in high school I, I wasn't given the, you know, a, a fair opportunity to just really cut up and really put myself out there um, like these other guys have. So I'm pissed off already with that. And so I go to Arkansas State and um, I go in raw talent, man. I'm I'm going super hard because I, I know where I just came from and I'm just ready to, you know, to, to prove my family right, you know, that, that you know, because they the ones who believe in me. Um, they the ones I could call on when I'm, you know, when I'm I'm hurting and mm-hmm. and, and for them to push me just like um, um Moster in his situation. So um I lean on my family, man, and and I went to A State and, and, and I red shirt. I I felt like that was the correct thing to do. And after that, you know, I really just, you know, left everything on the field like Russell Westbrook. You know, he <laughs> leave everything on the court. Yeah. Um I left everything on the field, man, and and, and it worked out for me and I didn't get drafted. I felt like I could have been drafted for sure. So now that's on me. Now I'm like, I'm pissed again. But I'm like, let me get my foot in the door um, with the Falcons. And then I go in and I, you know, I'm with, I'm with um, Raheem Morris. I'm with Coach of the Florida OC from the Jets. I'm with Kyle Shanahan. And they really got a – they developed me on P-Squad for sure because that mm-hmm. that training camp, you know, I'm getting better. I'm trying to learn the offense. I'm coming from a a fast paced offense to where we had signals from our guys who gave the plays from, you know, the coaches gave the plays from being out of bounds and just signaling it in. And we would just line up as fast as we can to run the mm-hmm. play. So this, so now it's get in the auto, listen to a sentence and go execute it. And I'm like, what the hell? What position I'm at? And, uh, <laughs> it was like that. And so, so I just had to learn, and and I I had those kick returns. I was mm-hmm. returning like crazy my rookie year, um, in the preseason, and that and that helped me glue to the team, um, and just really just develop develop every you know every week every week I would go against True Front, um, and and um, Alfred at cornerback, and I was the receiver. I would go against all those guys and try to win. Um, it was nothing like you know being taken advantage of out there just running to be running. It was all about, hey, these you're doing real things that could show us, you know, that you're improving, and I would do it. And we would, me and Coach LaFleur would, he would put together the tape um, and show me um, that Saturday, well, no, that Friday, after that Friday practice, and we would watch it, and he'd be like, this is what you're getting better at. This is what I do like. This is what I don't like. This is what we have to fix. This is what I do love about you. Uh, what you bring, what are, what are you going to bring to the table that, you know, that Julio, um, Sanu, Aldrich Robinson, Taylor yeah. Gabriel. Aldrich, um, that's a throwback right there. What, yeah, what them guys, what 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 you going to bring to the table what they don't have? And then we had another guy who don't really get a lot of credit, Eric Weems. He was a monster. He yeah. was a special teams demon. He just wanted to play football. And that, and that helped me learn that, hey, man, it's not about being on offense. It's about, you know, being a football player. So I go to Seattle. I get the chance to go to Seattle because they, they brought me up and they brought me back down. I didn't clear waves. I go to Seattle and I go in there and I'm just a football player. Like I I, I am a receiver. I'm developing as a receiver. I go in, I go to Seattle as a running back. So running routes is easy to me. So yeah. now it's all about what you're going to do on kickoff. How you going to block this guy on punt return? And, and I was just, you know, I was really embracing it because I remember how he did. I'm like, damn, this dude crazy. It was my dog, though, and, and I just carried over. You know, I took what he did. I took what all those guys did and tried to put it into me um, as a player, just being an observer. And I think that helped me out for sure. Um, so, yeah, man, that's that was kind of me just knowing that I could get that opportunity. Once I get that opportunity, I just had to be ready for it um, and somebody to trust me, you know, because I know what I could do. Absolutely. And I think um, it's something similar when I, now that I'm thinking about it, like, the transition just to running back generally that's the first thing and uh you're never really i'm an outsider so it is what it is but you're never really guaranteed a spot in the league regardless if you transition from a receiver to 
to to run it back or from a receiver to tight end or just from a, another position switch. But, you know, you're given that opportunity to showcase your skills. And, and I think about Antonio Gibson uh, and the situation he went through with Washington. Like He took that. He, he was drafted out of Memphis as a receiver. And the first thing that the, the commanders did is, hey, we're going to put you at running back. And, mm-hmm. and, and I will ask you, like, how did that how are you observing Antonio Gibson in that running back room? Uh, and his transition over the years, because you've been here since the beginning with him. Both of y'all been mm-hmm. both of y'all been together. How how is that transition looking like for Antonio? A A G just a raw talent, man. Um, being a receiver, the thing about him being moved to running back, he's he's two hundred plus pounds, you know, two twenty yeah. plus. So coming from receiver and taking hits, it ain't gonna be. It shouldn't be nothing for him, you know. That's why he running through guys and was a receiver because he you know, he's just so big and, and he's just a good athlete. Um, but it's it's things that he had to learn that, you know, as far as protection, um, just watching him, he picked that up. Uh, he was focused, man. He was focused. He, he put everything in it, um, and, and he learned the game. And he learned the game, and, you know, you just look at him now. You know, he's becoming that true running back, you know. And, and Is this – oh, yeah. go ahead. You got it? No, you good. You good. Now, I was about to follow up because like, I, I was about to say, is this like one of the, the – I, I think about the, the, the other – because you were there, I think, when Marshawn left in Seattle. I mean, you had one year in Detroit. Uh, mm-hmm. What is this like the, the best group of running backs that, that you've been a part of, just in terms of the, the stable, Jonathan Williams, uh, Jared Patterson, obviously, um, and then you obviously, uh, Antonio Gibson, yourself, and, um, you know, Brian Robson as well. Okay, so, so yeah, <laughs> <Let's hear man. laughs> um, So, yeah, when you talk about, I can't never forget about my guys in Seattle. So when we, it was me, Chris Carson, um, still a dog. Yeah, um, Mike Davis, um, and CJ Procise. We were all we were, and then Rashad Penny. We were all up on that same team. Um, and then you come back. Now you come with me, AG, B. Raw, J. Will, and and um, J. P. Oh. <laughs> That's you could hey look, a, I can help you out. You can do a one A and a one B, or you could just do tie for first. You know, if you want to, if you want to be politically correct on here, it's perfectly fine. <laughs> no, nah, because um, Chris Carson was a bruiser. Um, Penny Penny could definitely run that thing. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, it's it's kind of fit the same for real, for real. Then you had Mike D. Then you look at Mike D, who was behind him too. Then you look at. Um, a a jiggle, a jiz, a jeezy. Um, then you look at B Rob. Then you then you yeah. look at J Will, who behind them too. It's like it all matches up the same. To be for real, man. Um, just a lot of great players, man. I don't really, you know, I don't really want to do the, you know, the Kobe. Not not comparing, but the I guess you, you know, know LeBron is better than my. You don't want to put them against each we, other. Like they're yeah, all yeah, stable. Yeah, yeah. They're really good. Yeah, I, think, I got I you. Think, yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right, so let's uh go ahead and transition right quick to to the to the team um and, and the commanders, man. I think one of the hardest things from a a, a coverage standpoint and from a fan standpoint is the fact that you know there are a lot of emotions in the team. Obviously, like it, it is what it is. It goes without saying for every single team in the NFL. But when you lose four straight, uh, you know we don't think about all the time what the players are going through, and and uh, we don't think about every every single piece of work ethic and every single piece of commitment and, and all those things that the, the players go through. Like what, what, how hard was it just trying to remain headstrong over a four game losing streak? That was uh, pretty tough. Yeah. We, we know you guys are pissed, um, <laughs> you know, fans, you know, it's broken yeah. up to fanatics. So we know you guys are pissed off, but I mean us, you know, just, we, 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 we are the ones actually out there putting in the work, you know, the blood, sweat and tears, um and, and come up short on game day so we the ones that really got to deal with the pain you know so but it was all about you know these guys took this stuff on pretty well man um the locker room never changed these dudes stayed focused head down and you know kept you know trusting in the coach's plan and knowing that we will eventually get through that wall and right now we're still getting through it but at the end of the day um you know you just got to keep your head down and stay focused kind of stay off the Stay off the internet. Let people say what they're going to say because at the end of the day, you know, we are the 1%. And, and you know, um, if 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 everybody could do a shit, you know, everybody would do it. So yeah. <laughs> so you just let That's them talk. And, and we just, you know, we just 
do what we got to do, man, to, to try to get over that hump, you know, and, you know, that's what it's all about for real, for real. Absolutely. And, and then the, the Packers game, uh, a good outing from the offense. Uh, and, and, and it seems like you're you're able. Well, I mean, it's one game. So and it's always one week at a time. So I, I guess I would rather ask more. So what needs to happen uh, on the offensive side of football just to make sure that you improve and continue to improve as the weeks uh, move along? Stand on course, um, you know. Kind of piggyback on these wins. Uh, uh, well, not, I wouldn't even say that. Um, delete all that. You know, you go into the next game, O and O. Go into the next game, O and O. Man, stay focused. Um, r- really learn, know the plan, know the plan going into the game, um, and trust the plan to execute the plan, um, and believe in your preparation once the game start, man, and bring that energy and juice, um, and you know, and then we see can we get another W. That's that's how I view things. That's how I feel like it should be uh, took on by all the other guys on the offensive side, speaking offensively. Absolutely. And, and uh, with Scott Turner, uh, just understanding how he's been able to use uh, you. Uh, actually, I'm sorry, four people. I had I had three people initially, but, but you, uh, Brian Robinson, Antonio Gibson, and obviously Curtis Samuel uh, in and out of the backfield and also at the line of scrimmage as well, uh, out wide from um, between you and Antonio Gibson. Uh, how much has that really opened up the offense per se? But um, like, I feel like you've always had those looks from a receiver standpoint, but I, I don't think I've seen that much from Antonio Gibson in terms of out uh, wide alignments. How much do you think that uh, that has helped this offense to this point? Damn, I don't really understand the question anymore. Are you once you, you good? AG in. No, so so essentially, um, at, at some point, there's been a conversation for for an extended period. Like, uh, there's been some some ways in which Washington could use Antonio Gibson more as a as an offensive weapon rather than just mm-hmm. primarily at running back. And I'm mm-hmm. saying from the running back position altogether, with Curtis Samuel being in and out of the backfield, and you have yourself uh, Antonio Gibson both in and out of the backfield, but also split out wide. How much does that really uh, help expand the offense and create more looks uh, uh, for the defense as well? Who's, who's checking you off? Well, I think I think our OC um, is doing a good job of just getting those guys involved. Um, you know, getting these guys all around the field, um, finding different ways to get those guys the ball, um, and, and let the playmakers make the plays. I think that's you know you're doing a real good job with that. Um, I think I think that that have defenses on their toes um, when ten go to the backfield, uh, when twenty four go out wide. Um, you know, it's kind of it, you know you got to find you got to see those matchups. You got you to let these guys do what they do. Um, this is what they're good at, so let's do that. Um, I think that's kind of what it's been like. Absolutely. And, and the Q collar, as we transition <laughs> to uh, the Q collar, man, um, it's from what I understand is the FDA cleared, uh, the only FDA cleared sports equipment proven to help protect the brain uh, from repetitive head impacts. Uh, and then obviously there's a, the way that that is applied uh, via the neck that, that helps um, the brain movement upon impact, uh, and, and which is the, the primary cause of brain injuries. Uh, what made you consider adding the Q collar to your equipment? But also, can you speak to why uh, other athletes, other athletes, excuse me, should consider the Q collar as a as a must have piece of equipment? Well, well, I see concussions, and you know these guys, you know CTE. These things are real things that's coming up um, in the future for athletes. Um, and, and when, you know, I had a concussion as well and, and not really knowing how many have I actually have had. Um, so not really knowing what the brain looked like and just listening to these guys uh, once they, you know, they, you know, CJ, my agent, he introduced me to the, um, to the Q caller and, and we sat down and we talked to Suzanne and everything she said made sense, you know, and, and, and just what I went through. Um, I think it was it was a no brainer for me to say, damn, let me protect myself because if you don't, nobody else will. Um, and these guys came up with something to protect athletes. Um, and so I think all athletes should definitely consider it, think about it, um, and, and and really, you know, well, you know, sit down and, and and talk with your fam, man, because this game we play is brutal. You know, it's you know, shit, we hit in every play with our heads and you know shoulders and causing those causing that brain to move around. Um, and these guys came up with a great idea um, to protect the brain, and, and I don't see why any athlete um, that's that's hitting, that's having collisions in their sport, you know, would even you know second guess it. Is this your first? I'm 
I'm trying to see, like, have you been able to like feel the the differences from the the point in which you didn't use the cue collar? Is it something that's tangible or more so just subtle in terms of the, the difference that it makes? So, so I mean, it's the cue collar is on you. Um, I can't feel what's going on in my brain. I got you. Yeah, uh, yeah. I can't I can't feel what's going on in my brain. Just you know, just actually believing in the study, um, and and, and kind of you know looking at the research and those guys going back and and looking at guys' brains who wore the cue collar versus guys yeah. who didn't wear the cue collar and i think it's a it's a big difference in that absolutely and uh from what i understand as well in a season-long trial with football players athletes not wearing the cue collar were three times more likely to have significant changes in their brain tissue caused by hip head impacts while 73 percent of athletes wearing that cue collar uh, had no change while only 23 percent who didn't uh, had no this is a, a strong word. This discernible change <laughs> in their brain <laughs> tissue uh, per the FDA. Uh, JD, man, I appreciate you. I want to give you the floor right quick just to let anybody and everybody know whatever it is that you got going on. Uh, like you said, you said stay on socials during that season. Uh, but, you know, even way, e either way, you can plug whatever it is uh, that you want people to find you, hear from you or whatever it is that you got going on off the field as well. Nah, man, I'm just, I'm just, you know, I'm the win, bro. I'm just, you know, just blowing with the wind. <laughs> Stand out of the way, man. Um, but I would just like for everybody to protect themselves out here, take care of yourself, wash your hands, um, and do the little things, man. The little things are important. Damn, set, huh? Watch him throw the ball. We gonna pick it off. You gonna let him hit the hole, or you gonna cut it off? You gonna play through fourth and long, or you gonna punt it off? Your defenders have you hit us, put your pads in. Don't be looking for the ref to throw no flags in. Keep the helmet on. Keep the cleats tight. You the type to want to win by any means, right? You should look alive. This is Trapper Dive.